Hey everyone, in today's video, we're going to be creating an express server, an API, and we're going to be hitting that from our React frontend using Redux Sagas and using the use effect hook. Now, the beautiful thing about express is if you've been following our previous videos and you know how we've already set up the use effects to hit an API and the Redux Saga to hit up an API, it's going to be super simple to integrate. And even though it's so simple, it gives us so much control because now we control the server and we control the data that is coming from the back end, it will pave the way for future videos and more complex examples. And if you find value in this video, please consider leaving a comment, liking, or subscribing. I can't tell you how much it means to me. I read every single comment and it really helps get these videos out there for the YouTube algorithm. So let's jump straight into it. If you do not remember our previous videos, I've already set up an application here. And that application is essentially just a Redux Saga application. And if you don't know how to set that up, you can watch my last video, which will show you exactly how to set up Redux Saga and exactly how it works. But essentially, Redux Saga is just a framework that we can hook up with React and Redux that allows you to hit an API and get data back from it. In this case, we have a very simple application. All we are doing is we are hitting an API that gives us a user object and we are displaying the first name of that user object so and sorry if you can hear my dog in the background but essentially this API all the data that it is returning is the ID of the user the first name of the user and the last name of the user now instead of hitting this API I want to hook it up to my own Express API so let's go ahead and let's do that so I've made a new directory for my new project called Express Hello World. And I'm just gonna go ahead and NPM in it. And you can pretty much just blaze through this since we're just making a very simple application. And once I open that folder up after I'm done doing NPM in it, you'll see that it's pretty much just a folder with a package.json in there. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is open our terminal up and we're actually gonna wanna install Express. So we're gonna type NPM I Express. And while that's installing, let's go ahead and look through the Express starter code. Now, the beautiful thing about this is it's so short. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to create a new file called index.js because I specified that as the entry point in our npm init. And I'm just going to paste that in here. And let me run through what each of these does. So first of all, we are um, importing the actual Express library, and then we're calling the default exports function that will actually create what is known as our app. And this app um, variable is pretty much what we're gonna run everything through in uh, um, Express. It allows us to pretty much call any Express function, set up an endpoint, or actually set up the listener on the port we want. The next thing we do is we um, declare a port. So Express also runs on 3000 by default, I think. So I'm going to change that to 8081. Um, now, the next thing we have here is an app.get. So what this is saying is we're going to allow a get request, and that get request's path is just going to be slash, which is pretty much the just the default. So it'll be when we run it localhost, it'll be localhost 8081 slash. And when we hit that, it will return a response um, that says hello world. And you'll notice there's two variables here. This is called rec and this is called res. What they stand for is rec is pretty much the request object. So when someone hits your express backend, this request object will store anything that they might have hit it with, whether it's headers, whether it's parameters, query parameters, um, anything like that. And then the res object is the response object. So that's how you would send data back. That's how you would set, for example, a 200 status or a 400 status, um, et cetera, et cetera. But this isn't uh, exactly an express tutorial, so I won't go too in depth in that. The next thing we have is our listener. So this is what actually starts running it um, and keeps our express server listening on that port. And you can see when it runs, all we do is we have a little callback function and we just console log it's listening at that port just so we know that it's running properly. So we can go ahead and type npm run start and it will go ahead. Oh, and we don't even have a start script. So um, we can go ahead and uh, do start and we can just make that start, stri uh, start script run node index.js. There we go. And now if we run npm run start, it will go ahead and run it. So let's see what happens if we actually go to that endpoint. So if I go to localhost 8081 and I click 
um, that, we can see we get hello world popping up. And that is because for the regular path, we made it uh, return hello world. Now I can change this to say hi YouTube, for example, and that would work. Go ahead and refresh that. Oops. Oh, you have to restart your application. Um, it's not like React where they have hot reloading. If you want to avoid that, you can install a package called Nodemon, so npmi nodemon. And I'm gonna go ahead, so while, while that's installing, instead of doing node index.js, I could do nodemon index.js, and that'll just make it so that whenever I save it, if the express server, um, if the express server is running, whenever I save it, it will restart it. So if I come over here and refresh, it'll say hi to YouTube. Now, if I change that to hi Anthony, you'll see it restarts the server. If I come ahead and refresh, it'll say hi Anthony. So just small quality of life things within uh, React. So now if I were to, for example, create a slash user endpoint and save that, and let's say hi from the user endpoint, if I come over here and in this URL I append slash user, you'll see I get high from the user endpoint. Now the data I'm trying to replace from this API is pretty much this blob of JSON. So what I can do here is in the res.send, I can go ahead and send all of that data in that map. Now if I come back here and refresh, you'll see here it returns the exact JSON that I wanted to. And this is exactly what I need. Now in my React application, I can come back into that application right here. Let's uh, minimize this for a sec. And if you remember in our um, sagas in the request saga we specify the url that we want to get the data from over here now instead of having the data at our my json server i can now point it directly to our react um, our express server by typing in the the url of our local host so i can just go ahead and copy this oops i meant we should definitely copy the backend endpoint so i'll go ahead and copy that and we can just go ahead and replace it right in here Oops, just like that. And if we go ahead and restart that and come back to our React application and refresh it, you can see we're now getting the data from here. And to make sure that's happening, what we can do is we can go to the Networks tab. And in the Networks tab, you can refresh the page and you can see all the requests that are coming out. So we are making one network request and that's to uh, the user endpoint of our localhost 81 and we can see the response and we can validate that we're actually getting the data from there and just as another check we can even go ahead and for example change the first name to something like alan and if we come back we refresh the page you'll see that now all of a sudden our request is failing. Now, the reason it's failing, and Express is sort of finicky when you run it locally for this reason, is something known as cores. And cores is essentially sort of this web thing that has been around for a while. I'm not gonna go too in depth into what it is, but essentially a very basic and maybe not that good explanation is that whenever you try to access resources or you know an endpoint from one domain to another, there's something called cores which will automatically block it unless that domain is whitelisted. And this is to prevent, you know, really weird sites and domains and uh, people um, from different IPs hitting your endpoint that you don't want them to. And Express has a pretty good um, tutorial on how to essentially allow a specific origin to access your endpoints. And we're going to go ahead and do that. So the first thing we're going to do is npmi cores. And while that's installing, let's walk through the code. All you really do is you import cores, you set up your cores options, and then you do an app, you um, have your entire application use it, doing app.use, which will make it so that any endpoint in your backend uh, express server will apply these cores rules to it. So let's go ahead and try that in our application now that it should be installed. First thing we're going to do is go ahead and import cores. The second thing is we're going to create some cores options. Now in these cores options, you can pretty much specify the origins that you want to allow. So in our case, we're going to allow localhost 3000 to hit it because that's where our React server is running on and that's where we want to hit. Now the next thing we're going to do is just have our app.use cores, um, which will make it so that um, all the endpoints use it. 
And app.use is normally how you use middlewares in Express, and cores is um, known as a middleware for Express. And we can go ahead and pass in the cores option. So now that we've got that ahead and saved, let's try making that same request one more time. We'll come in here, whoops, and I'll go ahead and refresh, and it allows us to make the request. So it's not blocking our domain anymore. And that is pretty much it in terms of the Redux Saga implementation for using it. Now, I know a lot of you guys um, enjoy using, um, in, instead of Redux Saga, if it's a very simple application, you probably would want to, for example, just use a use effect to hit it. And this is gonna look the same as when we use the use effect to hit an external API before, but just to have it all in one place, I'll also go ahead and add it here. So instead of needing all this dispatch stuff and the use selector uh, to get the user state, because um, that is all connected to Redux and Redux Saga, what we can go ahead and do is just have our use effect and our use effect um, will actually import Axios because it's making the API request in line um, and the URL we're going to hit is going to be that same URL that we saw before which is just localhost 8081 slash user so we can pop it in there and we're gonna need a way to store this so what we can do is we can just have a user state um, variable so set user equals react.use state and we're gonna set it to undefined at the beginning and once it gets the data back, all we're going to do is we're going to say set user with the um, response data. Oops. Just like that. So let's go ahead and see if that worked. And if I refresh the page, um, I don't even have to, but you can see that it's still making the API request and it's still working. So this is by far the simplest way to do it. If you're making a very small scale application that maybe has one or two API calls, you can definitely get away with just using use effect um, for your API request. However, if you're building something for a client or something that's very big scale and you're going to be making, you know, more than five, 10 uh, different API response, uh, API requests, and you're going to be storing the data in sort of complex ways, you're definitely going to want to go ahead and set up Redux Saga so you have something tangible um, and a really nice structure to make all those API requests and store the data in a way that all the components have access to it. But that is it for today's video. If you found value in it, please consider leaving a comment, liking, and subscribing. It helps a ton with the YouTube algorithm. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you're all staying safe. Take care.